Hey everyone, James Reeves, TFB TV. It is my honor and privilege to be here at the CZ factory in the Czech Republic. And today I have a specialist, technically a, a product specialist, my good friend Daliver. He's going to walk us through, I think, one of the most underappreciated firearms that's out today. You would agree with that, I imagine, right? <laughs> right, right. So Daliver, tell everyone who you are. Uh, so my name is Dalibor Krubica. I'm a product specialist uh, here in CZUB and I'm specialized for uh, handguns. I also worked as a project manager for a P10 project. So that's why I'm familiar with all the details. And that's why you're really the perfect person to be on this episode of TFB TV because we want to shine some light on the P10C. There's a lot of P10C reviews out there and videos out there, but none that I know of with an actual product specialist here at HQ. So tell me, what is the P10C? Imagine I'm, I'm turning on this video and I've never even heard of the P10C. What, briefly, what is it? It's a polymer frame, framed striker fired handgun. Uh, it's a simple design uh, with a pre cooked striker. Uh, ambidextrous controls, completely produced in here in CZ uh, Uherski Brod. So the main parts are made of carbon steel and nitrided, so the barrel and the slide. And the frames are made of uh, polyamid 12, but also produced in Czech Republic. Dalibor, you worked on the development of this pistol. Why? Who, who said, you know what, we're going to do the P10C? So back in 2013, it was obvious that the CZ needs striker fired handgun in its portfolio to be successful, mainly in tenders, but also uh, in commercial market. The decision was made to start a project, which was also back then called uh, P10 already. In this project, uh, we were working on two concepts actually. And the one you can uh, see and buy today is the, the winner of this internal contest, let's say. Why P10? Why the number 10? It all goes uh, back uh, to P07 and P09 products. Maybe you can ask why there is no P08, but I believe that the, uh, that the reply for this question is obvious because uh, P08 is already uh, used by Parabellum, so it was not uh, available. So it's the continu continuation of the existing line. I so see. It's the pistol Number 10, actually. Okay. <laughs> Not extremely original, but it doesn't have to be. Not everything has to be the shadow, right? Yeah. You know, or the tactical sport or the scorpion. So I like the P10 because of its simplicity. Speaking of that, there are a lot of competing polymer frame striker fired handguns out there. It's definitely, especially over the past 10, 15 years, yeah. one of the most popular segments of the market. So why would I buy a P10C? What makes the P10C as good as or better than anything else in the market? P10 is exceptional in several points. Uh, we try to focus on the areas which are not so perfect on uh, some other products. So one of the points uh, which is uh, always uh, amplified uh, since the times of uh, CZ75 is the ergonomy. So we tried to use what we learned on CZ75 and implement it on P10. Uh, it, uh, it's reflected in the shape and angle of the grip, but also in the design of a trigger bar, which is ambidextrous or like it has two sides. Mm -hmm. So the force uh, from, the, from the striker and from the trigger pull is equally distributed towards the striker. And that uh, leads to like really clean and crisp uh, trigger pull. You guys did nail the ergonomics and I think the trigger pull for a striker fire polymer frame handgun is actually really good. What else did you do with the P10? Uh, we also uh, tried to uh, improve the cocking serrations. So you can see that there is uh, a lot of surface area on the slide in its uh, front uh, portion, but also in the back. And um, also the materials which we used for the frame, for example, are really uh, high quality. We are using polyamide 12 with uh, glass fiber in it, so it's really durable, 
it, it can withstand a lot of harsh uh, handling and uh, also all the tests in har harsh conditions. Talk to me about that. How durable and how reliable is this gun? So during the R&D of this gun, uh, we always uh, aimed to shoot 50,000 rounds mm -hmm. from it. So we uh, shot a lot of uh, ammunition throughout the R&D process. And then we were also focused on uh, other tests like uh, function in harsh conditions, but also all imaginable drop tests and all the sets of tests. Well, you said you aim to shoot for 50,000 rounds. I, I aim to shoot for running 20 miles today and I did two, yeah. you know? It's, so when you say you, you aim to do it, did you accomplish shooting 50,000 rounds? Good question. Yes, uh, finally we did. But during the R&D, it was not uh, easy since the beginning. Uh -huh. So it was a learning process and we learned a lot on P10. Can you talk to me about maybe some of the issues that stopped you from getting to 50,000? If you can, because I'm, I'm dying to know like what you had to do to, to meet that very high mark. There were several areas. Uh, one of them was the uh, material of the slide and, of, and material of the barrel in combination with the heat treatment and with the surface treatment because uh, this uh, surface treatment is nitridation but it also affects the, the core of the material so it's uh, really important to find the proper way how to heat treat the material and then do the su surface treatment and not to get the di uh, dimensions affected and to keep the surface but the core in, uh, of, the, of the slide, for example, in the right balance. So in the development of the P10C, that was an issue that you ran into then? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that was one of the things we were dealing with. Uh, then also some internal parts. Uh, like customer can see that we are using a lot of MIM parts, uh -huh. but it's not because of they are cheap, because I have a feeling that the people like believe or think that uh, the the producers, main part is crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But those parts, like uh, actually most of the parts in P10 are made of uh, stainless steel material. Mm -hmm. So it's MIM. It's MIM because those parts are complex in, in right. shape, in geometry. So the technology actually uh, help us to, to lower the overall number of the parts in the gun and also to achieve uh, the geometry which is more durable than machined part. Because in case of machined part, parts, uh, you will end up with sharp corners, for example. So all those things are eliminated by the MIM technology. Now tell me if this is a fair understanding. As I understand MIM parts now, there are a lot of manufacturers that use MIM parts because they can be less expensive, but they're using MIM parts that are poor quality or where they should be using machined parts instead Whereas you can actually do MIM parts, you can do them well, and sometimes they're necessary because of the complexity of the part can't be machined. Is that, uh, a, did I say that accurately? Yeah, Oliver? yeah, that's, that's accurate. Uh, like in some cases, the MIM parts were used as a cheaper version of uh, traditionally machined parts. But uh, if the MIM part is uh, designed, like since the beginning, for a MIM technology, then the additional value in quality, stability of the process, and also in durability is, uh, is much higher than in case of just taking the existing part and, and putting it into the MIM technology. So what I want to know is when you guys are at 49,950 rounds and you get that last box of ammo, did you have champagne and confetti waiting for like that 50,000th round and it was a big deal or did it just happen? It just happened and we continued over this 50,000 rounds. No shit. And then actually we take that gun, clean it like really properly because you can imagine uh, that it was like completely in a mess and show it to our sales department. So they were actually surprised when we told them that this gun is after the 50,000 round okay. lifetime test because it was still looking, I don't want to say brand new, but... Uh, it was still in pretty good shape. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. with 50,000 rounds. That's really neat. Now, what's the key to that? Why can this go 50,000 rounds? 
materials used for this gun, then also the geometry of internal parts. So there was a lot of uh, evolution on, uh, on every, actually every part in this gun. Also the distribution of stress in between the contact surfaces, for example, in between the slide, which moves backwards really fast and the frame where it stops. So it's the combination of factors. It, it, cannot, be say, uh, it cannot be said that it's just like one thing, yeah, like the material or the surface treatment. But it's a, a lot of factors all together. And you guys figured that out trying to make a 50,000 round copy. We talked about durability. Talk to me about reliability. Is this, in your opinion, the most reliable? I mean, I, I need you to brag here, Dalibor. Is this the most reliable polymer frame striker fire handgun ever made? It is. <laughs> what can you tell me about that? I know a lot of this is proprietary, secret information, but, but elaborate on that if you can. Yeah, I can say that uh, uh, we are doing a lot of tests uh, right in, in here, in our facility. And we are not just focused on uh, our gun, but we are doing those tests also in comparison with our competition. Yeah, sure. So it gives us also better understanding of uh, how the competition uh, functions, for example, under harsh conditions, like uh, after the drag uh, through the sand or uh, after the over the beach test. We know uh, where we stand and we believe in our, our product. Talk to me more about those tests. What harsh condition tests did you subject that to? Over the beach, a lot of people may not know that's when you're coming out of the water, right? Yeah. And shooting it, you drag it through the sand or what have you. What else can you tell me about the, the type of testing that this gun underwent? Yeah, so uh, we focused mainly on the tests according to NATO standards. So there is... Uh, I forget the number, the NATO... AC-225. Like the... Okay, yeah, so AC of course you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the tests consist of the function in uh, low temperatures, but also in high temperatures. Then there is uh, sanding or dusting of the gun. Uh, also the water, so there is a water spray uh, and then the over the beach test, as right. you already mentioned, is when the gun is completely submerged under, under the water and you will just take it out and shoot it. So that NATO spec, it, what you, AC-225? AC-225, yeah. If I just buy, I'm in the United States, I find a P-10C and I can do an AC-225 test at my house somehow. Is the off-the-rack P10C, is it going to pass that if I'm Joe American at home and I buy one? It should pass. It always depends also on the preparation of the gun, yeah? Because uh, the gun, how it's delivered, yeah. is greased uh -huh. to, like, to be able to withstand a long time somewhere in the shelf, for example. If the gun is uh, clean and prepared, then it should withstand all those tests. How should I maintain my P10C? What do you recommend? Grease versus oil? or how do, If I want the maximum reliability out of my P10C, how do I get it? Actually, one of the tests uh, in AC-225 is with the gun, which is completely degreased. And we know that the P10 uh, works uh, perfectly in this condition. So there is uh, no special oiling or greasing needed, just the contact surfaces, for example, in between the, the slide and the rails, which are guiding the slide over, over the frame. And that's uh, probably the, the main thing which uh, should, be, should be greased. And I would avoid any excessive oiling because it will just cause that all the dust will stick to it, so the gun it can affect the function of the gun in, uh, in a wrong way. Interesting. Okay. So less means more in this case. Is there anything else that I don't know about the P10C that you think would be neat for me in the audience to know? I would mention the trigger mechanism, which is uh, pre cocked striker fired. So it means that you are always compressing the mainspring when you are pulling the trigger. But in case of P10, uh, the overall trigger pull and also the trigger travel is uh, really, as I already said, nice and clean and crisp. And uh, one thing which uh, differentiates P10 is the reset of the trigger. Because P10 has a really short reset just out of the box without any replacements in uh, disconnector or springs. So the reset is something we are proud of. 
I hear pre-cut striker. I think if I drop it, this son of a bitch is going to go up. Is, is that true? No, it's not. We actually destroyed like 42 pistols during <laughs> the test, them. just dropping them. <laughs> yeah, dropping them from different angles. So, uh, and we are always finishing the lifetime test with the board obstruction test and with the drop test. Mm -hmm. Just to be sure that even during the production, the quality and the reliability of the guns stay the same. Carl, talk to me about the P10 barrels. Of course, you guys make them in-house. They're cold hammer forged here at CZ, the factory. Talk to me about them. So here we have a barrel for P10C, halfway there. Uh, still need to be finished, you know, for the uh, tilting uh, lug over here. Also, the chamber needs to be done. And we guarantee uh, 10,000 rounds for the, all the main parts of the pistol, so also for the barrel. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, realistically. But realistically, it's way more. We, we've done the torture test. Uh, we've shot more than 50,000 rounds with the pistol. And, yeah, still working. And that's unsurprising because these are all cold hammer forged, like on the other side of that wall. Yeah. A, a lot of Americans exactly. are starting to understand what cold hammer forging is. It's much more common here in Europe than it is in the United States. True. But you get that extra durability. And yeah, yeah, because when it's called hammer forge, we get the density of the material, which can withstand a, a like, tremendous amount of torture. Let me ask you what might be a difficult question, because it's easy for you to say, as somebody who works for CZ, like, yes, I think this is the most durable, reliable polymer frame striker fired handgun out there. Is this the most durable and reliable handgun made by CZ? It is for now, but we are still working on new projects. So. I can promise you that uh, we will come up with something. Even you know, better. I like the hint. Um, I'm not going to take the bait because you're just going to tell me, no, I can't talk about it. But I, I see where you're going with this. But Dalibor, again, it was an honor to have you on the program. Yeah. It's an honor to be here at CZ and to bring you guys along with us. Stay tuned because we're bringing you a lot more content from here in the Czech Republic. Take care.